Hi, my name is Ken Hughes. Welcome back to another video. Today, I want to talk about return on investment in customer experience. It's a question I'm asked all the time on stage. What is the return on investment? What are the metrics? How do you prove that CX works? What should we invest to get back? Let me start by telling you a wonderful story about a pediatrician in Brazil called Leandro Brando. He understands customer experience. He understands the notion of delight and excitement, and giving back to customers. So not only does he personalize all the bandages for his patients after surgery with little Disney characters, he also, his, his piece de resistance is how he brings them to theater, like to surgical theater, not to Frozen the musical. Uh, he flies them in as little superheroes into theatre. And in doing this, he dissolves the pain point, of course, the pain point of the nervousness around going to theatre and for surgery. For the parents who get left behind, um, you know, who are worried about their little kids being taken away from them, look at the joy, the joy of like, the kids literally run with excitement into theatre. And so this is his understanding of taking a pain point in a customer journey, doing what you can to dissolve it, going beyond expectations with customers. This is what customer experience is about. It's about a motive connection. And so when you think about return and investment and emotive connection, they're kind of opposite ends of the telescope. I think that's what happens when people say, oh, you know, what is the return and investment on customer experience? I think you're looking down the wrong end of the telescope. Let me give you an example. When I was 11 years old, I fancied a girl in my neighborhood and I told her that I would buy her a Mars bar if she was my girlfriend. <laughs> if she'd agreed to be my girlfriend, she'd get a Mars bar. In my head, I thought this was an amazing deal. Like I got a girlfriend and she got a boyfriend and a Mars bar. This was a, it was a win-win scenario. <laughs> Understandably, she didn't think so. Like I was so focused on what I wanted and I was willing to bribe her with Mars bars to get it. And this is the problem with relationship, where you know, I had to grow a little bit older to understand what relationships are. They're about what you give. And so I think what's very interesting in this kind of what will I get back, like the return on investment, look at those two words. The investment part, absolutely, we should invest all the time in the customer relationship. But the return part, that's a needy statement. What am I going to get? Like look at that from a relationship point of view. I'll do the laundry today, but what am I going to get in return? I'll give you a hug, but what am I going to get in return? I'll say I love you, but what am I going to get in return? Imagine a human relationship like that. Imagine if you found a ledger or a, an, a, a note on your partner's phone and they noted every single thing that they had done for you and then like the kind of expectation of what you want to do back for them. That's a really psychotic relationship, you know? And so we need to focus, and Sadhguru said it really well, Sadhguru is a spiritual um, enlightened ph philosopher, he's an amazing guy, you should follow him on YouTube if you get a chance or on Instagram. But watch this video when he talks about relationship. If you want a genuine relationship, it must be how you can pour yourself out and doesn't matter because it's in giving, there is fulfillment, not in taking. And he's so right, it's not really about what we, what we get in relationship. You know, just every religious text will have the same statement at some point, it is in giving that you receive. And so this idea of outbound energy from a customer experience point of view is what we really need to focus on. We need to focus on the investment, not the return. Because if you focus on the return, you're just going to think, well, what, what do I get? What do I get from my customer? So it's really in the giving that we develop deep emotional bonds. I mean, coffee shops are a great example. Coffee shops have this kind of imprisonment, entrapment <laughs> loyalty program where, you know, buy nine cups of coffee, get a tenth coffee free, and they see it as some kind of amazing loyalty scheme. They even call it a loyalty scheme. Well, it's not. It's, it's entrapment. It's, you know, you keep coming back and then eventually you get something. So we're trying to, we're trying to kind of hold you. It's, kind of, it's like the equivalent of like, does this tissue smell like chloroform to you? <laughs> you know, it's, it's, you're trying to hold the, the, the customer instead of actually them wanting to stay in a relationship. And compare that to this coffee shop here in a North Carolina, local Patriot coffee shop. They rolled out a red carpet for every shopper coming into the store. Now, obviously it's just a bit of fun, but what's interesting is you watch these clips, you watch the reaction of the shoppers. So it of course it went viral and it was great fun, but their reaction, those customers get involved. They immediately kind of lean into the collaborative space. They think, yes, it's, it's you know, this is a relationship with them in with this coffee shop. And, and so while it's joyful and fun and very viral and, and but the core part of this is that when we reach out to customers, we build a mode of connection. And reaching out to your customer, continuously investing in customer experience, the investment is what we need to focus on, not the return. And a third story which will really bring this to life for you is again the queen of connection, Taylor Swift. So again, you know, people do ask, well, how is 2023 and 2024 Taylor Swift's 
years. How come her era's tour is, you know, the biggest grossing tour of all time? Her movie concert, uh, movie, the, the biggest grossing concert movie of all time, sold more tickets on its first day release than any other movie ever before. How come her movie, when released on streaming, became the most streamed movie ever before? It's because what you're looking at is actually the investment of 18 years coming good. So for 18 years, she has invested in the customer experience, invested in the customer connection, and emotively stepped into her fans' lives and let her, their, them into her life. And so what you're seeing is that, is that um, investment coming good. And I want to show you a clip here. Again, looking at the Eras tour, remember that only you know, 5% of people who want tickets actually get to go. There's a huge pent up demand, the excitement, they wait a year to go to the concert if you're a Swifty and you make the friendship bracelets and you, you work on your costume attire and eventually the day comes, the day comes when you as a Swifty, you get to go with your friends or your family to this concert and my God, the hype and you're standing there. The concert opens with a sequence of kind of big giant, see these giant flower petally things and the dancers come on stage and, and they form a circle and they, they all lower their petals and from beneath Taylor, she pops up, she on a hydraulic platform and the, the concert, the stadium goes mad. And, and so that's the opening sequence. Now I'm gonna show you a video of a girl and her sister in Sydney, Australia. Again, they couldn't get tickets. They eventually got tickets. The mum got them tickets and, and they had to get to Sydney and all the travel and you know, so this is the hype and here comes the moment. The moment when Taylor's about to arrive on that hydraulic uh, platform. I want you to watch the body language and the, the emotion play across this girl's face. She's holding her hand with her sister. Look at the tightness of the grip of the hand. And, and while the sister is kind of excited, the girl in front of frame, the amount of emotions passing across her eyes. She's about to throw up into her hoodie sleeve. <laughs> in her hand is to her mouth. She has nowhere to laugh or cry. The emotions keep flashing across her face. And, and she's just so excited. And then when the moment does come, when the moment of singing with everybody else, when Taylor starts singing, she can't even get the words out of her mouth. She's choked with tears. The emotion has overwhelmed her. She shares a look with her sister and that look says everything. No words are exchanged, but the look is, we did it, we're here. This is happening, oh my God. And so that connection, the connection that you're looking at on screen there, imagine if you could just have 10% of that connection with your brand. Imagine if you could invest in the customer experience to the point where people are just delighted to invite you as a brand into their lives. Because that's the game. The game is to emotionally connect with your customer, to deepen the customer relationship so that we do get customer lifetime value. And that's what branding is all about. It's about relationship. And so yes, look at Dr. Leonardo Brando and say, well, how can we treat our customers like superheroes? Look at the local Patriot Coffee Company and say, how can we treat our, our customers like VIPs? Look at Taylor Swift and say, how can we treat our, our customers with a deep emotive connection? That is the secret. Stop focusing on the return on investment and you need to shift to a desire to invest. ROI to DTI. DTI should be the new metric for customer experience, a desire to invest every day. How can we invest better, deeper, with more engagement, with more excitement and delight with our shoppers? If we keep doing that, I can guarantee you, you have customer lifetime value. Until the next time, I'm Ken Hughes.